How's it going, everyone? Welcome to the week four Elite Battle League. Wait, no, Elite Battle League week four roundup. They said that in the wrong order. It's, I haven't. It's been a week, okay? I, I was sleeping the whole time. Um, <laughs> sorry that this weekly roundup was late. Like I mentioned, kind of right there, uh, I was you know gone, uh, so we couldn't really record. I didn't want to give you guys a half baked version of the roundup. I'd rather give you 100% and late. Uh, but of course, uh, my name is Only Hermit, and I am joined by my co-host, Mr. Inferno Man. How are you doing today, my my friend, how you been? I'm doing good. I got a new face cam. Woo! New face cam. Looks great, by the way. You look great. Thank you. Um, <laughs> this week had some uh, uh, <laughs> interesting uh, things. We kind of got some stuff right. Um, obviously, we got two predictions wrong. Or, uh, well, I got, one I got right. two wrong. I got one right as well. <laughs> um, so yeah, th this is this was a huge week. Uh, looking forward to playoffs. Uh, so let's just hop right into it. First up, we have the Kentucky Kinglers versus the Miami Dragonites. A uh, quick inter interesting note from this was that uh, between both those teams, Mimikyu, Dracovish, a uh, Cinderace, I want to keep calling it by its nickname, uh, and Scizor have all been in every match. And I would fully expect like Mimikyu, Dracovish, Cinderace, but like Scizor, I found that a little weird. Uh, but at the same time, Scizor's not, not the worst Pokemon, of course. Um, but uh, the Kentucky Kingers actually ended up leading with Corviknight uh, and were shocked that Miami actually led with Cinderace just right off the rip laid it out on the table said here it is uh here's ace um however derek's iq it's pretty obvious it's going up um he immediately switches to dracovish which uh ate a power ball mind you from from that center is ate that power ball um and then i believe that Drake, Dracovish used Vicious Rend, uh, and obviously Dracovish versus Cinderace, not a kind matchup for Cinderace. Cinderace switches, goes into Swampert, and gets O-Code by the Vicious Rend, which I was a little surprised by. Derek got really hyped in that moment, that was funny. Mm -hmm. uh, but then what surprised me a little bit more, I didn't even notice at first, was that Corviknight didn't even have an attacking move. Um, I believe it had Roost, um, Taunt, I'm not going to remember the other one. Uh, but I know the other one obviously was Tailwind. That was a pretty interesting strategy from Derek. Uh, we said Derek needed to come out with some kind of strategy for, for Cinderace, something different. We haven't really seen Tailwind. So obviously Tailwind um, Corviknight was, was kind of out of the blue. And not to mention, like, like I just said, it didn't even have an attacking move. Um, then, yeah, so Tailwind Corviknight comes in for Dragapult. Uh, again, new strat, no attacking moves. Rayquaza <laughs> comes in. Uh, start Swords Dancing, which I actually didn't realize that Rayquaza got Swords Dance, and it actually Oko critted uh, Glaren Darmanitan, which had come in for the Kinglers, uh, a crit, extreme speed kill after Swords Dance. Uh, it was tough. Mimikyu came in to handle the Rayquaza, uh, which Rayquaza switched out for Scizor, uh, and Scizor started Swords Dancing. And I don't know if you thought this, but I immediately was like, oh, here comes the Baton Pass again. I was like, uh, Derek hasn't seen, so Derek mentioned that he hadn't, this was uh, recorded before the week three matches even came out uh, So Derek wouldn't have really probably expected a swords dance baton pass from scissor We would have expected because we saw it happen already um, When you saw scissor swords dance, did you think did that come to your mind again that 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 could be coming again? Yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I was just like, oh, no, Derek's not gonna know what's coming and then it died <laughs> <laughs> And then Lunala came in D-Max on the scissor and killed it and I was like, okay, so no baton pass there, but then Rayqua Rayquaza came in and killed Lunala. So it was a little bit of back and forth for a while there. Uh, Swords Dance Mimikyu then came in. Well, Mimikyu came in, Swords Dance, and then killed the Rayquaza. Uh, then Cinderace came in after Rayquaza, and after that, it was very close, very back and forth. But once Cinderace came in again, re-entered the match, that's when uh, obviously it took over. Killed Mimikyu, killed Dracovish, which honestly was Derek's like only chance at beating Cinderace. Uh, and then it just easily finished off Heracross and Corviknight. Easily finished them off and was your week four MVP. Cinderace leading the league as well for the season MVP and is more than likely the, the odds of it not getting season MVP is pretty low. Uh, so it probably is going to be your season MVP. Um, but with four kills, no deaths, it, it just came in and finished up uh, the Kinglers. And Miami won in a 6-3 fashion, pushed them 
I believe that what Stone said, uh, if two teams have the same record, I think it goes off a differential first. Um, like their KD first, it could be head to head. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I asked Stone and he hasn't answered me, so I don't know. I'm pretty <laughs> sure he said, out, <laughs> Yeah, I'm, well, I'm sure he's busy. It's all right. <laughs> um, no, it's not. <laughs> Starting it's into not your all right. soul. <laughs> uh, but I'm pretty sure the KD comes first, which would put Miami in first right now with a three and one record. And that actually drops the K uh, Kentucky Kinglers to two and two record. Or I think they were at, at third already or they were joint second, whatever. Um, and they currently have a plus zero differential. So give me give me your thoughts on this match. Give me give me you, you literally just watched it not too long ago. Uh, so give me your thoughts on, on this match up here. Yeah, going into it again, you know, with Gonako being my my go-to team for the entire season and uh, Derek being a good friend of both of ours um, I really didn't know like which side to take um, I knew that Guanaco is like second best team so um, I was like I'm confident that Guanaco is gonna win but it would be cool to see Derek win um, mm. but as soon as Scissor came out and Luna, like even Lunala taking care of it like at that point I, I knew that Guanaco Guanaco had it um, my favorite part, I even commented this on Gwenako's video, but when he was trying, like, when he was about to choose to bring out Ace, like, I could tell on his face, he was just like, is it time? Yeah, I think it's time. <laughs> <laughs> and then he yeah. comes out, completely destroys him. Um, when I realized that Derek's last two team members were Corbin Knight, who's weak to fire, <laughs> and, uh, uh, Heracross, which is four times weak to flying, and, you know, Libero alone. Of course, it's gonna like absolutely obliterate it, but even if it didn't yeah. have Libera, I'm pretty sure he would have one shot it with Aerial Ace there, so yeah. At that point, I was just like, yeah, he's got in the bag for Derek. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it honestly, you, you're right. At that point, um, I think when. Yeah, I think when Rayquaza killed Lunala, is when I was like, ugh, this is not. This is not looking pretty. Uh, it's still in the air. Uh, but definitely when Ace came back in, it was it was it was over. Uh, like you mentioned, Heracross was not gonna take a hit, uh, and Corbin Knight obviously could have maybe taken a hit, but it had no attacking moves, so it really wouldn't have made a difference regardless. Uh, a risky play from Kentucky, and like we, we said this in the predictions, we said Kentucky needed to come out with something different, um, but unfortunately that something different was not enough, and Miami was able to steal that win. Well, not steal it, they they won it. Uh, fair and square, obviously, but it was a it was an intense matchup until the end. Uh, uh, Ace, that's under Ace, man. It's just too much. It's just <laughs> too much. I think we're learning that it's just too much. It needs to be bad next season. All right, moving on. <laughs> um, we have the Everglade Entes versus the Detroit Luxuries. The Detroit Luxuries picked up their first win of the season uh, in a pretty in pretty good fashion. I mean, it was a little shaky at times. It was a little shaky at times, but still regardless they managed to pull out the win it was a little bit of a come from behind sort of win um but that's kind of what they've been doing all season uh finally there's a score line that's not 6-3 for the luxuries uh they won 6-4 in a 6-4 fashion uh quick note for detroit they brought they've brought glaring moltres colossal hacksters and metagross every single match uh, this season so that has also led to them needing to bring luxury next week so i believe they play uh, if i recall correctly they play yeah the score bunnies so they have to bring luxury then again luxury is not in the worst position against the rain team but regardless detroit actually led with ribbon b and sticky web right away um whereas everglade led with palkia um and uh, foos did allow the free sticky web because he switched out into by sharp um and then i believe detroit switched into metagross um and foos actually correctly predicted the eq from metagross and got a free switch into rotom wash which led to a very interesting moment uh where <laughs> where uh foos said you know max might have predicted or might have forgotten that uh, rotom wash had had levitate um, but in that moment, I literally stopped Foose's video and I went and went straight to the gamer's point of view and I was like, why did he click EQ again? Uh, in the moment, he said he was trying to predict the Volt switch and just get an EQ off on anything else. Um, but then he later commented on Foose's video and said it was a misclick, so I'm not really sure what the reason was. So I um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that moment was pretty, is pretty, uh, interesting. 
uh, it led to death by washing machine for the Metagross, unfortunately. Uh, I also uh, realized this week that Max really takes a long time to think about his decisions. Uh, <laughs> clearly, we paid off this week, though. Uh, but it took <laughs> Fus was there at one point. Fus was like, "Can you like hurry up so we don't hit the time limit?" <laughs> he didn't say that, but you know. Um, just, he's like, "Look, man, I've hit the time limit before. I don't want to do it again." <laughs> no, yeah. Um, but Haxers at some point comes in for the Detroit Luxuries, starts D dancing, and another interesting moment. Fus starts kind of giving Max a lecture about not getting uh, caught setting up all the time, which we've seen it again and again every match this season for for the Luxuries. They've set up uh, to a certain degree at some point. Uh, has it paid off? Clearly not as much as he probably would have liked. Uh, but I really like that moment where Fus was giving Max, he was giving him advice, but it just kind of sounded like a lecture. I thought that was really funny um, about uh, the dangers of setting up. Um, but Clefable was able to come in for the Everglade Entes and kill Haxorus and Detroit quickly fell into an 0-2 hole there. They're down two months for a second there. You're like, oh man, well, here we go. They're heading towards, you know, another loss. Uh, but Salazzo came in. This is, this is this was really interesting right here because this is when it got really strategic because it was just switch for switch for switch for switch right here. After Clefable kills Haxers, uh, Detroit sends in Salazzo. To counter Salazzo, Everglade sends in Galarian Slowking. To counter Galarian Slowking, the uh, Luxury sent in Galarian Moltres. To counter Galarian Moltres, the Entei sent in Nido King. Um, so, of course, Moltres sets up with a nasty plot. And Nido, Max Lightning, does not kill Galarian Moltres. Max does not use the Dynamax, though, on Galarian Moltres. He does take down a couple Mons, I believe, but he does not use the Dynamax. He actually saves it. And it actually ended up paying off from him saving that. But. Uh, he ended up letting uh, Moltres go down to, to Palkia, but then G-Max Colossal came in, or rather, Moltres did kill Nido King. Uh, then Palkia came in and finished off Moltres. Uh, G-Max Colossal came in though, finished Palkia, killed Rotom Wash to even the score up at 3-3, and it killed Clefable. So Colossal came in and did a lot of work, and this is why I say it's a little bit of a come from behind win because he was able to come from that that 0-2 deficit build it back and actually take the lead through colossal um glaring soaking was able to kill the the colossal but uh ultimately glaring soaking was killed by slazzle and slazzle outsped by sharp for the final kill securing a 6-4 win for the luxuries and their first win of the season uh what are your thoughts on this matchup here um so obviously i was right i said that max was <laughs> gonna get his first win this week and josh said otherwise um but um, you know, watching this match, it was it was a lot of a lot of fun to watch. Um, I was watching it from Max's perspective, just because you know, I just wanted to see it, um, hear what he was saying while he was battling, because you know, I was on his side this week. And uh, honestly, like every single time, like towards the end of the match, that something good happened for him, like when he knocked out a bloke one, just hearing the cheers was just yeah. you couldn't help but be happy for him, because he was so excited, and. Um, you know, he just emits so much positive energy that that it, it was truly my favorite part of this week as a whole, um, besides what we're going to talk about in a little bit. Um, but, uh, yeah. yeah, I really enjoyed watching this match. Uh, GG's to Foos. Now you both all, uh, have one win on each side, so that's pretty cool. Um, it's, it's it's nice to see the Luxuries finally win one. Uh, this result does leave, if we're going off the KD, uh, puts you above. Um, this leaves the Everglade Entes with a 1-3 record. They're currently minus 1 in 5th place. Uh, the Detroit Luxuries are still in 6th, uh, with a 1-3, 1-3 in in record though. Not 0-3, 1-3 now. Uh, they have a minus 7 differential. Uh, however, for those two, with that result, uh, we did say last week that if the Entes won, they have an actual shot at potentially even reaching the top of the of the league. Um, but with that result, both those teams uh, can no longer go above third place. The highest they can go is third for both of them. So they are guaranteed to be playing in the first week of playoffs. However, there's still quite a bit to play for for them in the final week, which we'll, uh, we'll talk about after this final matchup, which probably, I mean... I don't know it's kind of based off what the what one of the coaches was saying i guess is the most surprising result um the rain is over the chicago score bunnies versus the atlanta braviers chicago score bunnies lose finally to the atlanta braviers it was a pretty long matchup uh for my calculations it was about 18 minutes um i say my calculations and then i say about 
Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> the Atlanta Bravery managed to get the dub against the Chicago Scorpions, and it was not pretty for the Score Bunnies. It was not pretty for them. Uh, First of all, though, I want to say it was a very nice shout out to Aiden, who's Stone's son uh, from Corbats. I thought that was really nice of him uh, because they played Unite together. Uh, so shout out to the kindness in the community, of course. Um, but my biggest confusion was when I saw Galvantula. Uh, I was like, well, Galvantula is... Well, seeing Galvantula and and um, Fer Ferrothorn, uh, both, you know, obviously Hazard Mons. But seeing Galvantula more so kind of confused me because my immediate thought was like Sticky Web. I know Stone hasn't used, I know the Burberry have not used Trick Room yet, but I was just like, if you use Sticky Web, that's not a good thing to use against a Trick Room team because it's just going to help them. Um, and even what confused me even more is that Corbat said he was expecting Trick Room. He later admitted like, I, I shouldn't have brought that as it was a mistake. Um, but I was just, that, that was my thought process right away. I was like, why would you bring Sticky Webs if you're expecting Trick Room? Uh, but regardless, Rain Eclipse was actually making its first appearance this season since not really making an appearance in the first game of uh, the first week, obviously. It, it and, and that led to, you know, okay, I, I fully expect the Trick Room this time around. Uh, Chicago led with Galvantula. Atlanta led with Dialga. Um, aside from Galvantula being Sticky Web, it also, like Crobats mentioned, was a counter for Rain Eclipse. So I was like, okay, uh, fair enough for that. Um... Atlanta, like I said, though, did lead with heavy with Dialga. However, I did not know Dialga got Trick Room, and Matt just goes for it right away. Dialga sets up the Trick Room, and there it is. Finally, finally, we get to see Trick Room uh, from this team, and it paid off big. Um, and with the Sticky Web first turn from the Chicago Score Bunnies, that essentially ensured that that anyone on the Bravier was always going to outspeed as long as Trick Room was up. Um, but the first turn was huge, huge installing Chicago and preventing the drizzle from properly being set up because Chicago, from that point on, were on the back foot. In my opinion, this whole matchup, Chicago was on the back foot uh, trying to play catch up for the whole match. And it, they, they got dug into a hole right away in that first turn with the sticky web trick room. Um, and it was, it was, it was tough. Uh, but they do a couple switches. Ferrothorn comes in, Kakelder comes in. Kakelder actually CCs close combat to Ferrothorn, gets rid of it, one shots it. Um, and I believe Kakelder also killed Galvantula. So brought both hazard mons, and they were the first two mons to go down. And also, there goes your plan for the Rayonic class as well. So it was rough because Kakelder did a big, did, did a really good job there to come in and kill both the hazard mons. Um, and then Diaga came in killed the seismitoad which the seismitoad killed kinkelder dialga comes in and kills the seismitoad um and dialga switching again to set up the trick room because it's it had had reverted to normal and that's when i really got a feeling that uh it was really falling apart for chicago and they might not come back the chances were were like with every turn that was passing with every mod that was going down the chances of, of chicago making a comeback were just just diminishing um Dialga does go down to Kyogre, however, the tree the trick room is still in the picture because Rayonicus is still very much around. D uh D Max Valplume actually comes in, which I thought was very interesting. Came in on the Kyogre. Uh nearly killed Pelipper, but the dimensions did return to normal on that part. Um Matt did play the smart. He killed Pelipper with Max Ooze, which was a special attack. Uh, but it was killed by Dynamax Kyogre before it could really do any damage. Um, I thought personally that uh a misplay from stone towards the end which didn't really make a big difference was uh the thunder from lapras he missed his first one on Kyogre. you kind of have to expect the rain right there um but he doesn't and ends up switching doesn't kill the Kyogre. but eventually i mean it didn't like i said it didn't make a difference <laughs> um he admitted in the comments as well they made a mistake but it didn't make a difference rain Eclis comes in to finish Kyogre. Crobats kind of was like, you know, it may as well just try and set up Calm Mind, but Rayon Eclipse finished off Kyogre regardless with an Energy Ball and Energy Balled Kabutops for the final kill of the match, which secured Atlanta a 6-4 win over the Chicago Scorpions. A very impressive win as well, because like I said, Chicago was kind of on the back foot for that whole match. Uh, what, what were you thinking? Because clearly you, you thought a little, little highly of this match here. So what, what were you thinking with this matchup? Uh, first of all, you know, every week we, we're always just like, you know, Crobax is most likely going to win because, you know, that's, that's he's, before this one, he's won every single match. Uh, except for, you know, our ma his match with Bunako, that one we, we couldn't tell because they were both number one. Um, but for this one, 
Uh, even, you know, Matt saying himself that he was gonna lose because, you know, um, with his whole season and how confident he's been in, with him, uh, been in, in himself, words, um, he <laughs> wasn't really confident that he was gonna win. So I thought that that was gonna knock him down because he was he was gonna be too nervous to to think correctly on what he was supposed to be doing. Um, but obviously that wasn't true because Matt came around and you know completely killed this. I mean, mm -hmm. as, as soon as he had taken out two of Crobat's mons without losing one of his own, I was just like, okay, either Crobat's is gonna turn this around or like this is this is just how this match is gonna go and. Uh, that's just how the match went. He just continued knocking out Mons. Of course, he lost a few of his own, but um, mm. there was there was a, definitely a point where I was just like, I think Matt's gonna win this, and it's gonna be awesome. Um, but yeah, of of course, you know, I out of all weeks, out of all coaches to take down Crobats, I didn't think it was gonna be Matt. But I gotta say, uh, for being an underdog, for the most part. Matt come, coming around and being the one to, to take down Crobats and the Chicago Score Bunnies to be the first. It's pretty freaking awesome, so congrats to Matt. Yeah, 100%. Um, I think you might have done him a little favor, though, because now that pressure's off. You're no mm -hmm. longer undefeated. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to feel like, oh, I have to win this game. Um, so I guess it helps him in a certain way, but with that result, that actually did leave the Chicago Score Bunnies in second place with a 3 1 record. They are plus 5 behind the Miami Dragonites um and the i believe yeah atlanta bravery are in fourth with a two and two record minus three kd um <clears throat> they so first through fourth actually they all have a chance at first place which is crazy um but i feel like that loss shouldn't hurt the square buddies too much um at least mentally maybe when it comes down to the bye week uh it'll hurt them a little bit more but those were the week four matchups uh moving on to the week five matchups uh we have some interesting ones so man uh especially with after this last week these are some very very interesting matchups uh so first up kentucky kinglers versus the everglade entes uh both teams obviously coming off of losses uh, one, I feel like a little bit harsher than the other, uh, being, you know, the Kentucky's Kingler's loss was a little bit harsher, uh, because they just kind of, you know, got destroyed, um, uh, by, by Cinderace, <laughs> but, you know, what's new, uh, Cinderace is just too good, apparently, um, whereas the Evergreen Entes were, were, were very back and forth in their match, I think, personally, for me, it was when Colossal came out, that's kind of when the match got away from them, um, so these two teams definitely, you know, they're gonna go toe-to-toe -to -toe. they're definitely gonna go toe-to-toe -to -toe. uh it's it's very much offense versus defense here you have a very very offensive team with the kentucky kingers and a very very defensive and bulky team with the everglade entes uh kentucky has a little bit more to play for because like we mentioned uh, everyone in the top four of the league can potentially get first place or at the very least get a bye week uh so kentucky i would say has a little bit more to play for but at the same time the entes are playing for a quote-unquote easier matchup um is there really an easy matchup in the league not really but <laughs> but they're still trying to get at least third place um this is a very tough matchup what uh i want to hear your thoughts before i make a decision <laughs> uh i don't know yeah i think i'm on the same page as you this one's this one's up this is a tough toe, one toe, toe, yeah <laughs> uh i'm probably just gonna Pick the same team as you can say. Oh, of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, I, I I got one match where I chose a team other than Josh and I was right. So that's all we uh, need for this season. I just think if i think it depends on how the first like where the first I'm gonna say the first like two deaths go. Uh because if Kentucky can manage to, to grab some early kills um and really whittle down everglade then that's that'll be huge um so i think it's gonna come down to who gets the the, the, the early kills uh, and if i had to this is not biased stone but if i had to guess who was gonna get the first kills i'd go with the sword not the shield um and that would be kentucky uh so i really don't know i'm just gonna say kentucky because i think they will get the early kills and that'll give them a huge advantage 
but if Everglade wins, big shocker. I won't. I really won't be surprised at all. <laughs> so that's a toss up and a half. Um, so I'm going Kentucky. You said you're gonna go the same as me, so uh, I guess we're both going Kentucky for that one. <laughs> um, that would actually give Kentucky a, a decent chance at getting first place, um, but more than likely a better chance at getting second place and getting that bye week. That would leave the Everglade entities at one and four. Um, so not pretty heading into playoffs. Uh, but next up, we have Miami, the Miami Dragonites versus the Atlanta Braviary. So we have a arguably maybe the best team in the league now. Um, it's a toss up between them and Chicago still, but Miami's still pretty hot. Even when they lost to Chicago, they were still, you know, a couple hacks go their way. And uh, that match could have been very different. So Dragonites, arguably the best team in the league right now versus the Atlanta Braviary, who are coming off a massive giant killing performance uh where like we said they performed really well they came in and killed it um trick room paid off the first time we see trick room this season from the atlanta Braviary, and it paid off dividends i mean it was huge for them because they came in and they wrecked house um so this is a very interesting matchup because atlanta looks good Atlanta looks really good especially after cover, coming off that that win there against chicago square but at the same time like we said Dragonites are looking very good. Um, Cinderace is looking too good. It's not fair. Um, so I'm gonna lean towards the Dragonites, but with 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 the Braviary's performance last week, I would not be surprised uh, at all if they managed to pull off a result. I think regardless, it's gonna be a very close matchup. I think it's gonna be like a 6-4, 6-5 type matchup here, whoever's favorite goes in, but I'm leaning towards Dragonites. Uh, who are you? Who, who are you thinking with this matchup? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to go for the Dragonites as well. I mean, I think it's really gonna be like I wouldn't say like extremely close, but I, I feel like it, it'll be close enough um, Just just it's it's if Guanaco didn't have Cinderace obviously this season would have gotten so much different for him but um, You know I, I just predict Winaka almost every time just because of Ace and uh, yeah. yeah, just I just, just, wanna, just for this one, just for this one here. Um, I just want to throw it out there that the only match that Cinderace has died, they lost. Just throwing that, that out there. That is, that is true. <laughs> so, like I said, without Cinderace, he'd have a completely different season. So obviously, his Cinderace dying is what's going to cause him to lose. Mm -hmm. I feel like we need to give the same reason for for the same reason we gave for the Kentucky Kingers last week. If you can come up with a plan that gets rid of that Cinderace and neutralizes it and it works and you're able to get it off, then you have a pretty good chance at, at potentially taking down the rest of his team. Um, Derek had a plan with Dracovish and Corviknight. It obviously did not go out to plan uh, with Dracovish going down and all that. So if if Matt could come up with a plan for the Cinderace. Uh, maybe not completely revolved around the Cinderace, but enough so that you can take it out. Um, that'd be huge because, like I just said, uh, the only match they got taken out, it they lost. So it's pretty clear that that might be a key for them. Um, so I'm I'm interested to see that matchup. What plan Matt can come up with? I'm really hoping that it's not a blowout uh, via Cinderace, uh, but I'm I am leaning towards Dragonite there. But moving on to the final. Oh, that I think that would secure. Uh, well, depending on how this next matchup goes, that would likely secure Miami's spot at very least in the top two. Uh, it would actually would definitely secure them as a top two uh, in the league, so they'll definitely get a bye week if they win that. The Braviary could potentially fall as far as fifth, uh, maybe sixth, depending on how the other results go. Um, so that would be pretty big for both of them. Uh, but the final matchup is the Chicago Score Bunnies versus Detroit Luxray, obviously. Luxury coming off of their first win, so they must be feeling all kinds of good. Like we said, uh, the Luxury needed to get some kind of momentum going head into playoffs. You don't necessarily need to win both matches, it's just that you need to build some kind of momentum heading into playoffs. Uh, the score bunnies it's gonna be stinging, they're still gonna be st stinging a little bit from that loss. It was like I said, it was, it was not a pretty loss, uh, it was not the best performance this uh, season from them, but. They're still three and one. They're still very much in contention for first place, uh, and a win for them as well would lead to a 
uh, a bye week, much the same as the Miami Dragonites and potentially first place, depending on how the Dragonites matchups goes. Um, however, we didn't mention that Luxray still needs to make an appearance with the Detroit Luxray's uh, their mascot, of course. Um, and it's an electric type going against the Drizzle team. So it's not that bad. It's not the worst, you know, timing to bring uh, Luxray in. It obviously benefits a bit from the rain. Uh, obviously, you have like 100% thunder and things like that. Um, so it still benefits from the rain. It's not like it's a horrible thing to have to bring. And I'm sure Max picked Luxray for a reason other than it being his mascot. I'm sure there's a reason. We just have yet to see it. Obviously, it hasn't made an appearance yet. Um, so obviously, like we said, Chicago has a little bit more to play for in this one because they can wrap up a bye week and potentially first place with a win. Uh, whereas Detroit can only go as far as third again trying to get another quote-unquote easier matchup um, Again, none of the matchups are easy, but you know what I mean um, I'm gonna lean towards the, the squirrel bunnies uh, as I accidentally mistype their name all the time um, <laughs> I don't know why um, But I Don't think this is gonna be a 6-3 loss. I think this is gonna be a lot closer than the 6-3 loss mm. um, but I feel like score, score bunnies need to they, they need to head into playoffs feeling good. Um, they're still very much one of the better teams in the league, as proven by their record. Um, but the Luxrays still need that momentum booster uh, heading into playoffs. So even if they lose, just as long as they put in a very good performance, then they'll head into playoffs still feeling good. Even though, you know, Max is always smiling and cheering and stuff. So I guess it won't really make too much of a difference. But... Uh, I am leaning towards Chicago with this one. What what you what you thinking? Okay, this one's gonna be a complete shocker to you guys, but uh, I'm gonna go with the score bunnies. Um, <gasps> I mean, it's 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 obviously gonna be close, but like, yes. I mean, I, I just feel like this is one of those uh, chances or like matches where we're just like, I feel like the the. The winner's got a really strong chance of being the winner, so, you know, no no insults to Max, of course, congratulations again on your first win this previous week, but, like, Crowbatch just got his first loss, um, so, you know, I, I just feel like Crowbats has a very strong chance of winning this one. I mean, I, I really don't see him losing two matches in, in the season, in I really world. don't, so, yeah. um, I'm, I'm sure he's... Obviously, he's pretty prepared for electric types. It's not like Luxor is going to be the first one that he's going to battle this season. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll just have to see how it goes. I, I, I'm, I'm excited to see this match. He still has the former MVP Seismitoad, of course, mm -hmm. um, to handle that Luxor. So, I don't exactly know Luxor's move set, so I'm not sure if it's going to have something planned beyond like Thunder or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But. Yeah, leading towards Chicago in this one. This is a huge week for playoffs. This is this is it. This decides where everyone is and who their matchups are going to be. Whether you get a bye week, whether you got to face someone during the first week of playoffs, uh, and who it's going to be. Whether it's favorable, whether it's someone you might have lost to earlier in the season, someone you might have demolished earlier in the season, which we haven't really seen a demolition job this season. Um, but regardless, <laughs> this is a huge, huge week. And of course, good luck to all our competitors our coaches out there and of course take our predictions with a grain of salt we don't mean anything by it uh <laughs> it's just throwing it out there for fun um but yeah that's gonna be it for our week four roundup we'll catch you guys next week with the week five roundup of course check out all the coaches in the description down below check them all out and subscribe to them and be sure to check out my stuff in the socials uh all the links down below in the description again my name is lonely hermit you are on my channel so you probably know i guess my name uh and also of course check out my co-host my beautiful co-host in front of it all his links are gonna be down there as well channel twitter youtube instagram uh i don't know why i said channel and youtube they're same thing just it's all down there go go follow and subscribe and do all that good stuff do you have anything left to say my good sir Drink your water. Water! All right. Catch you guys with the week five roundup. Hopefully, you all enjoy the matchups, and we will see you then. Have a good day. Adios. Bye.